In this video, we will talk about how to show set relationships with Venn diagrams and with logic. So I want to begin with an example, and part A asks us to show that in parentheses, the union of A and B, when I complement it, is the same as, it's equal to, A complement intersected with B complement using Venn diagrams. So to do this using Venn diagrams, I want to draw the stuff that's on both sides. So I'm going to draw A union B, that whole thing complemented. And I'm also going to draw the other side, A complement intersected with B complement. And then hopefully we end up shading the same region in both pictures, because that would show that they're the same set. Okay, so for the left-hand side, let's do this in steps. So I'm going to draw a rectangle for my universal set. I'll draw circles for A and for B. And I'm going to first draw in just the union of A and B, because I want to do this in steps. Okay, so for that, I shade in everything that's in A, as well as everything that's in B, as well as everything that's in both. To be in the union, you just need to be in at least one of them. Okay, so I've shaded in all the elements that are in at least one of them, either in A or in B or in both. Okay, so next, let's draw a Venn diagram. I have my universal set. I'll have those two circles for A and for B. But now I'm going to draw the complement of the previous set. So A union B complement means the stuff that's not in the union. So I have to shade the stuff that's outside the union. So that would be all of this. The stuff that's outside of both of the circles. Okay, so shading that in. It's taking us a little while to shade in, but we're getting the idea here. So we are shading in, and that is the complement of A union B. So now I'm going to draw the other side of this equation, and hopefully the picture, the stuff that's shaded in, looks the same. Okay, so for this side, I have to handle with a little bit more care because it can quickly get compl uh, complicated. Um, so I'm going to draw a rectangle to represent U, and I'll have my two circles for A and for B. And I'm going to first draw A complement. So I'm going to draw one of these parts. Okay, so A complement means the stuff that's outside of A. That's not in A, but still within the U. So I'm going to shade in the stuff that is outside of A. Outside of A is all of this stuff. Okay, and now let's draw another Venn diagram. So I have my universal set U. I have my two circles for A and for B. And this time I'm going to shade in B complement. So B complement, I have to shade in the stuff that's not in B. That's, at, that's outside of B. So let's shade in all the stuff that is outside of B. Outside of B. Okay, so we are shading that stuff in. And there we go, that is B complement. So now we have to put that together and shade the intersection of those two sets. So let's zoom it out a little bit so I can continue to see these. Draw a rectangle, which I'll call U, and I'll draw the circle A, and I'll draw the circle B. Let's draw B a little bit better. Okay, and I have to shade, what is it, the intersection of A complement and B complement, which means I have to shade the stuff that was common to both of the pictures above. That was shaded in both of these Venn diagrams directly above it. So looking at them, the only region that was common to both of those Venn diagrams directly above this in A complement and B complement is this region. The stuff that's outside of both circles. That stuff, that region was shaded in both of these pictures directly above it in A complement and B complement. So that is A complement intersected with B complement. So from looking at these two Venn diagrams, the one I have of A union B complement and the one I have of A complement intersected with B complement, they look exactly the same. They have the same region shaded. So let's write a sentence stating that. So from their Venn diagrams, 
we see that A union B complement, the way we did it on the left-hand side, is equal to A complement intersected with a B complement, the way we did it on the right-hand side. All right, so that was part A of the question. In part B, let's talk about how we could show that same equation using logic rather than using those pictures. So let's think about um, A union B first and what that means. Well, A union B is it's the set of elements that are in A or B. So let's use that to now write a description of what, so I'm gonna use my implication arrow, of what A union B complement would be in words. So the complement is the, the set of elements that are not in the previous set. So the way I would write that is saying something like the elements that are not in A or B. In fact, let me write that by saying not in either, let's just be a little bit more precise here. Let me use some better English, not in either A or B. Okay, and I'm using an implication arrow here as opposed to an equal sign because A union B is not the same as A union B complement in general. Okay, so what I have, this complement, is the set of elements that are not in either A or B. There's another way I can say that in words. This is the same thing as saying that these are the elements that are not in A and not in B. Because if you're not in either A or B, that means you're not in the first one and you're not in the second one. Okay, so seeing this new choice of words, seeing the word and, that makes us think of intersection. Because you're not in A and you're also not in something else, so seeing the word and makes us think of intersection. Just like seeing the word or makes us think of union. And then not in A, that's A complement, not in B, well that's B complement. So what we have here is A complement intersected with B complement. So we've just shown that A union B, when we complement it, when we take the complement of it, is the same thing as A complement intersected with B complement. So that's that same set equation or identity sometimes is the word we used to refer to it, same set identity that we showed in part A, except this time we just use logic for it. Okay, so this set identity is so important that it has a name in set theory. It's, it's one of De Morgan's laws. So there are two identities in De Morgan's laws. The first is the one we just showed. A union B complement is equal to A complement intersected with B complement. So this one we just showed. And there's another identity similar to this, which is A intersected with B this time, complement. And it turns out it's really similar on the right-hand side. It's A complement union B complement. So essentially it just it flips the intersections and the unions. This one we won't show in the lecture videos. Instead, I'm gonna save that for the homework as an exercise for you all to practice this. Okay, and I'll put a box around De Morgan's Laws. So in terms of our goals for this section, we have finished goal two, talking about how to represent set operations visually with Venn diagrams. In the next video, we'll talk about how to count the number of elements in a disjoint union of sets.